All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist, and I'm here to hopefully teach you something about coloring. We've we've done the Wacom reviews the last uh, last couple days. Want to get back to kind of get back to the basics here before I scare you guys off my channel, uh, <laughs> and you think this is turning into uh, Linus Tech Tips or something. In the video today, there's really two things I want to talk about. Uh, one is uh, something called a split complementary color scheme. I'm going to explain that in a little bit. Uh, and also just, uh, I want to talk a little bit about saturation because this kind of goes hand in hand. And uh, so what I've done here, I have my color picker blown up uh, over here. Uh, this is Magic Picker, by the way, before someone asks. Uh, there's a link in the description uh, if you want to get that. But that's what I use as my color picker. It's usually over here on the right. But I wanted to blow that up and make sure you guys can see it well. And then over here, I've, I've got some pages that I'm going to be talking about and showing you guys some stuff. And so we'll get back to this teeter-totter in a second. Split complementary color schemes. Most people understand that if, you, if you've done any... Let me find my wheel. If you've done any research whatsoever about coloring you'll typically learn about at least two uh, right off the bat. One is uh, what they call an analogous color scheme, which is sort of, uh, you know, colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. You know, orange and red and yellow, or, you know, blue and green and yellow. These are colors that are close together. Uh, an example of that would be, say, this, where everything's kind of yellow and green and it's all in one of those two uh, one of those two flavors there and then you'll usually learn about complementary which um, again most people will tell you it's green and red or it's opposite things on the color wheel so uh, you'll see this a lot in sports teams logos and team colors uh, quite a bit you know the uh, you know the Lakers are yellow and purple and um, you know the uh, I, don't, I don't know another one off the top of my head, but uh, like green and red, or uh, what is it, orange and blue? You know, those are things that are complementary, and they usually work well together. They're called complementary colors because they complement each other, right? There's something now. I've been doing this not knowing what it was called. Like I wasn't really conscious of it until I started uh, kind of reading into why am I doing what I'm doing so I can explain this to these people. Um, but a, a split complementary color scheme is, say you start with your red as your primary color and you're going to go complementary, we're going to go across the color wheel to green, that would be a complementary. But what if you were to go slightly off of that over here, or maybe slightly off the opposite down this way? Those are, uh, they call it split complementary because you're splitting the, what would be the, the complementary color. Um, all this terminology is honestly not super important. It's not like I think in those terms, but it's good to be able to at least talk uh, knowledgeably about this stuff. So uh, I wanted to give you guys examples of how I've used it and how uh, some things to make those, those things work a little bit better for you. Now, um, let me close this one. We're done with that one. Now, not every page of every comic is going to have a, a scheme that is obviously recognizable. Um, and I, I, I grabbed this just as a quick example. This is a, a Marta Grazia page. You guys know how much I like what he does. Um, there's really not a, a super obvious, you know, textbook color scheme going on here. You know, all these characters have all these different saturated colors and and uh, but the background you could say is I would say this is kind of this is analogous definitely you've got this red uh, blue and and purples and pinks and so he's he's established kind of an analysis scheme for the background but you know the characters themselves you're not really going to keep uh, a, a scheme uh, with with characters especially characters in a superhero book that are dressed like this you know those sort of things um, I've got questions about before because people get confused when they look at something like this and they try to figure out what scheme it is and like I said there's not a, a textbook scheme with every uh, every image so with that out of the way like this is an example of more uh, traditional complementary uh, it's it's blue and orangey for the most part maybe a little bit toward the yellow but you know you're basically going from you know this sort of blue uh, 
uh, opposite the color wheel to about that. It might be shifted a little bit more toward that yellow, but it's still basically a complementary scheme. And it carries over into the, the, this page here. Now, I want to show you guys uh, an example of like a split complementary scheme. And, and also, again, how to make these work, uh, at least what I think works well. And, and of course, everything that I'm saying is, is uh, there's a lot of subjectivity with this sort of thing. So uh, if some other colorist tells you to do something different or believes a different way, then there's more than one way to skin a cat here. So uh, this whole scene uh, was, was actually built around this wig color, to be honest with you, <laughs> which is the first, I think it's the first time I've ever done that. This character in the previous scene didn't have a wig uh, and then did, and it, it just, uh, it, it seemed important. Uh, and so I said, you know what, I'm going to try something a little different here. And so we've got this very, very red wig. Now, if I were to go across the color wheel to use a complementary scheme here, it would be you know this green color, but you guys can see uh, it's green-ish, but it's definitely not green. It's kind of a yellow green, which is somewhere more like in this in this category or in this area of the color wheel over here. So that's a good example of a a split complementary scheme. Same thing on this page. Again, the that she's really the focal point. She's got all the power in this scene, and I have blurred out who this is uh, for spoiler reasons. In case you're not supposed to know, you're probably not because this book's not out yet. But yeah, that that's a good example of like a split complementary scheme. So when you're when you're trying to decide on which way to go, and, and you you want to go with a, like say you know you want to use something that's complementary, play around with some of the things around it, uh, the colors around that opposite, because you can get some pretty cool. Uh, schemes that way. What I want to talk about that kind of ties into this, and this is where we're going to use my my teeter totter today, and uh, this is my fantastic artwork. So I'm going to tell you where a lot of people. This is a really common mistake, and I should I should probably do a how not to color video on this. I've got a series uh, called that. If you didn't know, you can find it on YouTube. What most people will I say most. What some people will do, and then I get questions about this. Is they'll say, "Yep, I want a red," and so they'll go red. And it's like, "Okay, I want to do a complementary scheme, so I'm gonna get green. So I'm gonna get green, and I'm gonna do this." All right. Uh, these colors. I'm gonna put these right next to each other. Okay. So these colors are both equally saturated, and so because they're opposite on the color wheel, they really almost clash with each other. You know. Uh, to an extent. Now, they clash as far as with how they would look in a comic book to an extent. Uh, this is, you know, of course, Christmas colors, and that kind of works well if you're, if you're doing that sort of thing. But if you, if you have colors that are, let me get this, make this brighter. If you go straight opposite and keep the saturation levels the same, it, it just, it doesn't work that well when it comes to a scheme in a, in a book. You know, if I had and just to show you guys what this would look like, if I had gone from this red, which has kind of got a little bit of orange in it, but let's say I go with that red, which is pretty close to that, and if I were to go that same kind of ballpark yellowy color here and keep it just that saturated, it's like it's super super intense, right? So that's it, it's it's too much. It's it's too much uh, uh, saturation. Now, there's a video that I've pointed a lot of people do, and I talk about it all the time, but there's a video called How to Choose Colors That Work, and I'll link that uh, in the description. Uh, but Sykra uh, did that on YouTube, and it's one of my favorite, all-time favorite videos. And he uses a different technique to kind of describe this. I'm going to kind of use the my teeter-totter analogy here. So when you have a color that you know you want to be really strong and really vibrant in your, in your scene, like that red wig was in mine, when you decide to go opposite, you want to lower the saturation, okay? Lower that saturation considerably. So let's consider this teeter-totter is how much saturation there is in that color. You want to have significantly less uh, saturation in your, uh, in your opposite color. It's going to work a little bit better than going equal saturation on both of those. Because one of the things I get... Uh, Talk, a lot of people comment on 
is they'll say, you know, my colors clash and my colors don't seem to fit. This is probably what's happening. You know, if because if I go in here with something like, uh, let's just say blue, kind of a, a really blue color here. If I go in with the opposite of that, and, and my if my teeter totter here was level and it was the same saturation level, again, it's very, very kind of jarring, you know. Now, if I take a little bit of saturation out of that, it's it's not quite as jarring, you know, that difference. And that's why there's so much difference in this really saturated red and this really desaturated green that you're seeing in here. That green and yellow is really, really desaturated. So think of saturation as you know, you don't want the you don't want the teeter totter, the the seesaw, whatever, whatever you guys call it. Uh, you don't want it to be equal when it comes to like a strong complementary scheme. You want to shift that saturation one level to the other. Uh, so don't oversaturate everything equally is basically my point. And and what that also allows you to do is get really strong focal points because it's not just you know the values that are creating these. Uh, you know, focal points on the page, but if you have one uh, kind of spot of uh, saturation on that in that panel or on that page, it helps to create that really strong focal point and focus and all those sort of things when you guys are coloring your pages. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today uh, and uh, I'm glad to be back doing some tutorials. Uh, so if you like this, if you want to see more, of course, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. If you like the video, if you didn't like it, you can thumbs it down. Either way is fine with me. And I have a coloring course. There's a link in the description, 10 hours of, of, of start to finish, everything you need to know about coloring. So check the description for that also. All right, see you guys in the next one. Take care.